Hello, my name is Irene Gobriel. I'm from Dana Farber Cancer Institute, and I will be talking about the prevalence of monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance and what we've learned from the PROMISE study. So we've started to look at the data of screening high-risk individuals, meaning either you're African-American or of African descent, or you have a first-degree family member with a blood cancer. And our initial results that were published in Lancet Hematology last year show us that in the first 7,500 people who we screened, who are at risk, so this is not the general population, who are at risk, we found that by using mass spectrometry instead of using the traditional old technology of serum protein electrophoresis, we can find that over 30% of the population over the age of 50 have a monoclonal gammopsy. Now that's a much higher number compared to what we expected. And indeed, if you look at that same high risk population by doing serum protein electrophoresis in a subset of them, we find that indeed they only have 6% positive prevalence in this population. So think about it, the general population is about 3%, what Dr. Bob Kyle has shown us for many years. You double that number in a high risk population, which is interesting and exciting to show that indeed this is critical. And then you can double it again by doing mass spectrometry, uh, which is a much more sensitive test, which is now 13% to detect monoclonal gammopsy of undetermined significance by mass spectrometry or what we call MS, MGAS. Now there was another 20% beyond that 13 or uh, so percent, another 20% that were monoclonal gammopsies detected below the level that we can currently detect by immunofixation or SPAP. And we didn't want to confuse the term of MGAS with those because we don't know what is the long-term outcome of those patients, what will happen with them. So we termed it a new term called monoclonal gammopsy of indeterminate potential or MGIP, which is very similar to the notion of clonal hematopoiesis of indeterminate potential or CHIP. So it could potentially be a pre-MGAS, although we don't know that. It could potentially be an immune dysregulation that happens as we get older, as we get autoimmune diseases. And interestingly, all of the monoclonal gammopsies that we detected, whether it's MGIP or MGAS, were associated with worse overall survival and strongly associated with hematological malignancies, not just multiple myeloma, but lymphomas, Hodgkin's disease, and others, as well as cardiovascular disease and autoimmune diseases. So it opens the door for us to understand this better. What is this early immune dysregulation in many of us as we get older, because it was increasing with age? And is it really a predictor of developing MGUS or myeloma, or is it opening the door to understand immune dysregulation in many other uh, associated diseases like cardiovascular disease and inflammation, autoimmune disease and in immune dysregulation. And it allows us to now ask so many biological discovery questions that potentially can have clinical implications for many of us as we get older and try to understand how is our immune system responding to uh, changes within their environment and how could that potentially be a predictor of cancer as well as other diseases. Thank you.